Good morning, folks. I sure am glad I posted that magnetosphere model video the other day. We're going to see why and run down a length of news links and weather events, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day was very quiet. This has, of course, been true for days and days in the Earth-facing positions, so let's get right to what's not so quiet. On July 12th, we showed you how this magnetosphere model is made why it is absolutely atrocious, and exactly what the fake readings look like on there. Well, here we go. Minor fluctuations to start, bad math model reconnections turning red behind, still minor, and then, wait for it, what appears to be a shockwave capable of sending us back to the Stone Age. Wow. Except it wasn't real, obviously, and no such thing happened. The solar wind, which is all that magnetosphere model is based on, had another cosmic ray spike error, a big one. This must have been a heavy nuclei impact. And we know it wasn't real solar wind because the magnetometers across the world and on GOES as well as the KP are still silent. None of the electrons or protons budged for the event. And of course, we'd have seen a mega solar flare here on SDO the past few days. And you are watching this video on the internet using electricity. So yeah, it was another cosmic ray error and not the end of the world. Really good to ignore those awfully bad models. And now for something real. That's Ubinas Volcano in Peru, and the ash and smoke release, and how fast it was rising. When I saw that, I thought to myself, hmm, that's going to be visible on satellite. So first I had to figure out where Ubinas was. Sorry, I don't have all the Earth's volcano locations memorized. And then it was a simple matter of pulling the GOES satellite ash data. Yellow and red brightness and obvious volcanic pluming pushing eastward after its lift and we're on to Greece. The shaking was of moderate power, but it was very, very shallow, and rocked long enough to bring down structures and cause considerable damage. There was also a bit of a mess left by a tornado that ripped through the UK yesterday, never really expecting those there, and the flooding in northern Turkey has now claimed more than just buildings. First casualty is confirmed. Okay, folks, this is the gold ultraviolet ionosphere product. I am underwhelmed. Given the ultraviolet capabilities we have looking at the sun, this is wildly poor quality. I do hope the actual number data gives them something because this visualization is essentially a disappointment. They apparently have chosen the wrong angstroms of light in which to look, and the size of these block pixels, please tell me you've got better resolution than that. Just never mind. ESA wants to put a lunar colony in orbit before putting one on the surface. This is the halo orbit they've chosen to hopefully get going around the moon. But perhaps the ESA's more interesting moon story is, in fact, about the surface science they want to do. And when they talk about using lunar soil to power the efforts, I just presume they meant helium-3, the energetic compound supposedly abundant on the moon. But actually, they're talking about making bricks. Bricks, they say, can store both heat and electricity. Interesting play, ESA. And last but not least, the Ibex ribbon, the energetic signature on the heliosphere surrounding the solar system. Turns out the data are suggesting that a purely homogeneous interstellar plasma turbulence is not a great fit, but rather, it is the magnetic fields of the solar system interacting with the local plasma. They have been unraveling that ribbon for more than a decade now. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your weekly podcast coming up in a few hours. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.